2015 marked the 100 year anniversary of the building of the Alan Rock Estate in Birmingham. Constructed by wealthy philanthropist William Sutton, it was the first estate of its kind to be built outside of London. We consulted our residents on how they wanted to celebrate this centenary, and thus the Who Do We Think We Are Heritage Project was born. It was all made possible with support by the Heritage Lottery Fund, and in this film we give you our top tips and reflections on how to set up a community heritage project in your area. Number one, consult your community. The consultation pro process, which should be the same for any project really, was first of all to find out are residents interested in finding out about the history of the area. First of all, you've got to find out if actually the community wants the project you're about to set up. The yeah, leaflet came through the door of Sarah saying about the history of uh, the Sutton, Sutton Estate. On the leaflet then we were invited to the first steering group meeting with Sandra, which, um, which I attended. And we all went to a meeting, we were all invited to a meeting and it just snowballed from there. After that, you had to sort of say that you were interested. I think we, we put on like a little form to say that we were interested in getting involved. From then onwards then, we were consulted by phone, email, and sometimes paperwork through the door. So a consultation's a good way of saying, hey look, we want to do this, will you get involved? What role would you like to play? What events are we going to run? How do we make sure that we're steering in the right direction with the project? So consultation at the beginning is absolutely imperative. Number two, engage residents. From my experience, you have to try lots and lots of different ways because one person will engage in one way and another will engage in another. So for example, with the project that we ran, we um, tried text bursts, which is a way of texting the whole community to say, can you come along to our event? Do you want to get involved with this and that? We uh, ran a newsletter with information about what had happened so far and how you could get involved in the future. We did absolutely loads of door knocking. Actually, nothing works better than having a face. Unfortunately, quite a lot of the time, flyers will get binned or lost in other junk mail. So knocking on the door was a really, really good way of doing that. The residents have been engaged with this project in bringing together like, everybody's experience of living on the estate. I believe there's been 31 interviews or so. I contributed myself, so I did my daughter and my granddaughter. And it's nice to see that there are aspects of how they feel about this estate to what I feel. If you see the interviews that we're conducting on this estate and all the different people that we're actually bringing together and they're sharing their stories and their history together. You've got to find that hook, the thing that the community wants and actually it might be something that isn't, isn't really about heritage to start with but that draws them in. The project started uh, about the history of, then it went on to the allotments which we built. Um, and it sort of brought all the community together. More people are more open, more friendly, more chatty to each other. Whereas before, all the neighbours was distant, but now they all come together. And if you're not interested in sort of local history, such as like I am, then you know, to be made aware of it, it's good, I think. And I think the project's worked well with the, the community feel more, you know, talk more. It's just like it wasn't happening before, so I think it's 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 sort of a general interest that may have brought people together. Number three, build partnerships. So partnerships are essential. First of all, you don't want to be reinventing any wheels. So actually, if there are partners that are already doing things, why not work together to achieve a similar goal? And the partnerships that we've kind of felt are really important for this project in particular were with people who could provide volunteers, so with organisations such as the National Citizens Service, South and City Birmingham College. Uh, we had some um, university students from Birmingham who wanted to build their archiving CV, so they really wanted to look at uh, archiving for the project, so they were really, really keen to get involved, so that was fantastic. So I met Sarah and I told her I was really interested in, you know, becoming more involved. And she was running an archiving training session that was related to this project, and that's how I became involved. And the same with the, the local college. They had film students that wanted to um, create short films about the estate. We had a couple of their uh, film and media students come down to film a little film about the area and about the heritage project. And that's been really valuable because working with young people and young people becoming, you know, 
aware of like the local history as well. I think the key is to make sure that the relationship is reciprocal and that you can offer them something at the same time as them offering you something. So that's been fantastic. We also work with people who provide training, people like the Oral History Society, who can kind of train and upskill volunteers and then organisations who might be able to kind of provide information and research, people like the Met Archives in London. Which actually stores all of this historical information about William Richard Sutton. So from there I could see his will and there's also audio uh, tapes of several different interviews that were actually conducted on this estate. So we tried to work with as many partners as possible and really see what the different strengths of each organisation were and how they could support the project to be a, a success. Number four, run interactive events. Events have been a very important aspect of the project in getting the residents involved because it's not like a newsletter that you can ignore, it's not like you know a phone call or a text message they can ignore, it's like an actual feasible thing where they meet the people who are involved in the project, they meet other residents, they meet other volunteers and it's like a great way of just you know getting everyone involved and meeting each other physically. Firstly we held a community picnic and um, that was going to be a fun event for the families as a whole to come along, to come along, share some food, take part in some activities in, in, the, in the local Warden Park. And we were able to get residents that had never really spoken to one another to come along. But also, as well as that, to, you know, we'd look to talk to them about their, about their heritage and their history and people could go along and design their own flag about what community meant to them. It's important because like, it brings us together and plus it's like from, we can see the time period of what's been happening and how it's changed. The event that worked really, really well was the big photo share. So we encouraged residents and ex-residents to bring along black and white photographs and also more modern photographs so that we could compare and contrast what the community looks like today compared to how it looked then. And we had some residents that were born on the estate sort of 70, 80 years ago come along and bring some of their old wedding photographs and photographs of celebrations in the street from the Queen's Jubilee, so that was really successful. My favourite part of the project was seeing all the photos from the past and you sort of think, oh gosh, because it, it has changed part of the estate, you know, the modernisation, you think, oh gosh, I forgot it used to be like that. So with the project we were struggling to get young people involved, so we thought, oh, what are young people interested in? and we came across um, a fantastic artist called The Poet With Punch who runs poetry and boxing workshops and we thought that would be fantastic. My favourite event was Poet With A Punch. Um, my poem was about growing up around the community. I enjoyed doing it because like rather than being at like home on your phone and that like you could be out with the community doing new things that you've never experienced before. Number five, don't forget legacy. So for future generations, the measures we put in place um, are really important to make sure people can find out more about you know, what's happened here. So for example, we've kind of set up a website. People are kind of able to access there, find out things about the stories, um, the pictures and videos of what's happened here. A time capsule is being brought, pulled together by members of the community. So it'll have newspapers from today in it, a mobile phone, some of the stories we've collected, black and white photographs, which is really exciting. We've also got a listening post and that listening post is going to be able to kind of be taken to other kind of community venues and people can use that to try and see some of these stories. We want future generations to be able to access the material that we've collected. So we've been working with the Library of Birmingham and their archiving department to pull together all of those materials so that they can be accessed by future academics or future community members. And so we're really pleased that that's happened. So we hope the project will leave a really big impact both in um, the Alamock area of Birmingham, Birmingham as a whole, and also for Clarion, you know, as a national kind of housing provider. Um, and we also hope, I guess, that it just it maintains that momentum where people continue being interested and getting involved, whether it be in a heritage project or with another community action project. Uh, if, there's, if, the, if the project develops further, perhaps on other estates or anything, and I could be of any help, I wouldn't mind doing that. Even after Sarah's gone and everything, you can also see carry on and people still talking about it in years to come. It's important to me because like, here, where I'm living now, we can have like, memories. And I'm hoping that, you know, it will escalate from this. It's really important that we carry on doing what we're doing to make everybody happy.